Hi folks, hi folks, this is Karim Rao from IT Visualizer channel. Today we will continue our lab, the COVID-19 lab. This is the video number 18. We have been discussing in the previous video the following. Uh, we have, uh, just a moment. We have been planning to deploy uh, a couple of programs to a bulk of PCs in our domain. So we need a method to deploy as we said before uh, a couple of programs to a bulk of PCs in our domain silently so we will use two methods the first the first method is through the group policy so we'll create a group policy to deploy a couple of softwares to a bulk of PCs in our domain and the second method we will use something called PDQ this is software that you download uh, and it will deploy softwares to uh, a bulk of PCs in your domain and the common thing between the group policy method and the pdq method okay is it it is the silent way so you can use the group policy to install a lot of software to a bulk of pcs or a large number of pcs in your domain silently without the user seeing the installation process or to interact with the installation process so we have discussed in the previous video the group policy method and we have discussed uh, the beginning in the beginning uh, the software method or to use the PDQ software so we have installed the PDQ software and we have imported or we have uh, defined the software that we need it to be deployed to the PCs in the domain which is a program called VLC it's a media player software and we have defined the target computer so we have defined the package or the software that we need to deploy and the computers that we need this software to be deployed to and we have stopped at this uh, this step so we will continue working with the pdq software and the pdq software has a free version you can only deploy software to 25 pcs at one time so this is the free version as for the paid version you can install it to a large numbers as you like so we have discussed the group policy method and we will continue working with the pdq method and we have discussed a program called ad manager plus this is software uh, to manage the active directory and to get reports from the active directory uh, what i mean by manage managing the active directory can using this software you can delete users you can delete groups you can delete computers you can literally do everything in the active directory and also it is uh, a way or it is software to create a large number of reports uh, uh, from the active directory and uh, this software can access the active directory database and get you a lot of useful reports this is the ready-made reports in the software but you can also make custom reports and you can query the active directory database and get more custom reports or more info as, uh, as much as you need okay and this is not only the advantages of this software but you can automate through this software uh, a large or you can automate processes for example just li like deleting a bulk of users once uh, every time for example if you delete 20 or 30 users every month so this software can create a script to automate this process not only the users the, the computers the groups so it can automate any process related to the active directory and also through this software you can create users in this software uh, to limit its access to the active directory so for example you can have a user on the ad manager plus uh, to uh, to manage the whole active directory have full rights to the active directory and you can create users for example for the IT help desk or for the uh, junior IT's so when they access this software they can have limit access to the active directory okay so this is also one of uh, the benefits so it is basically uh, a software to manage the active directory and its main advantage is to uh, give a large number of reports with useful data from the active directory and it gives you some data on a dashboard concerning the active directory for example how much users are uh, inactive how much accounts are uh, disabled so this is what the ad manager plus do and we have this, this explored the different reports on the dif different options in this software the previous video in the previous video and then we need to uh, have a workstation or to op 
to open a workstation and see if the deployment method using the group pulse will be in effect and it will be successful and to see also the second way of deployment of deployment using the pdq if it if it will be successful on a workstation in the domain or not so we will open a workstation and see uh, the softwares uh, that will be deployed using the group policy and the pdq if they are applied to this workstation or not and at the end we are talking about taking snapshots from the primary and additional domain controller virtual machines we have said that taking a snapshot it is like physically taking a backup of the machine so if you are working in a virtual environment it is uh, preferred to take uh, regular snapshots of the virtual machines but you need also to regularly check these snapshots and see uh, what snapshots you need and what snapshots you need to take or you need to take a new snapshots and delete the old snapshots because all of this takes from the hard disk of your physical machine so we have discussed all of this in the previous video in this video we will continue working with the second way of deployment through the pdq so we have stopped at the pdq uh, deployment process at uh, importing the package that will be deployed to the machines and defining the machines that we need this software to be deployed to so we will continue working with the pdq and after that we will talk about after finishing this we will talk about a very important issue I will tell you all uh, when we finish the PDQ so let's go and see how we can install software using the PDQ first of all we need to have a note the PDQ software will work only if a certain service in the Windows is running which is uh, a service called PDQ this service uh, will be run using an Active Directory user account which is the domain admin so the service is responsible for running the software and a user in the Active Directory is responsible for initializing the service so uh, I have my domain admin account or Active Directory domain admin account it is responsible for starting the service of the PDQ which is responsible for running the software so uh, we need to make sure that my username is running so the service of the PDQ will be running so the software will open and we can use it so we will check the service now by opening the console or the custom console that we have created before and see the service so let's see the service of the PDQ software so here we will go and check the services He will go to services and then we will check the pdq service so here the pdq you will go up first of all uh, we check the windows internal database this is very important for the wsos console to work and the wsos service which also very important for the wsos services to run and the wins service we need to make sure it is running so the wins server will be running as well so here we need to go and check the pdq so here we go to the pdq deploy this is very important for the software of pdq to work so we'll tell him start he says that he did or he didn't uh, if we can go further here just again let's see the error sorry guys here let's see the error so when we start it what will happen here we can see that it's saying that the service did not start due to a login failure so here uh, my username which I provided for this service so it can start it uh, he says that the password is not correct or my username and password is not correct so if my username and password are not correct this service will not run and the PDQ software will not uh, uh, work so we need to check the username and password that I have provided for this service so we will what we will do we will open the service and go to the login tab and then here is the account and the password so I will retype the password okay and tell him apply and okay and try to uh, initialize the service or start the service again So here we will type the password and then tell him apply and okay here is the password and confirming it for the second time 
and then OK and then he tell me that I am granted to run the service or this username is uh, granted to run the PDQ service so now we will start the service we will see it will run correctly now we can open the PDQ software and see so let's start the PTQ software and then remember that we have uh, created two things in our previous video we have imported the package or the software that we will deploy to the uh, uh, machines in our domain and we have created a target list of computers or we have defined the target computers that this package will be deployed to so let's go further here so let's go here we can see here from this one okay let's go back again so here we can see that this is the new package this is the VLC package or the software of VLC and this is the target computers that this package will be installed to installed to so we need to deploy this package to this target PCs so this is the VLC software and this is the computers that it will be installed to so we need to deploy it to the these are the two domain controllers and the two workstations so let's see how we will do this we will right click so again we will right click and deploy once so we'll tell him right click and deploy once so let's see here and deploy once and then he will, we will choose the package so here this is the target computers we will choose the package which is the new package which is the VLC so let's go further here so here again just a moment here what I have done just a moment we here just go back just see this step so here we will go and choose the package so here these are the PCs that we will deploy this software to here we will choose the package so here we will choose the package which is new package this is the VLC package we have configured previously and we will add it and tell him OK and then we need to help to, to deploy now but before deploying I need to open this machine so I I will not be able to open the four machines together because I don't have uh, not enough hardware so I will open this and this and this and we will see how the software will be deployed to the three virtual machines so we will power this virtual machine and then we will begin the deployment process okay so let's wait and see how it will be done it will be done silently so the user will not see the installation process and it will uh, the icons of the program will appear on the desktop after the installation is finished so here this is the uh, additional domain controller that contains the, the PTQ software so now we will go and uh, begin the uh, deployment process so now we will tell him deploy now so now we will tell him to, de to deploy now so so you will tell him deploy now and before that we have give him uh, uh, a user that will be able to access these machines and have the rights to install software on the machines okay so now we have to tell him deploy now and then we will see in the new package in all or in all deployments tab here we will see the process so here in we, uh, we will click on the VLC package here we can see that this is the process and if we click on here here is the machines and the status of the deployment so here we see the four machines all of them are queued still the process of the installation is not initialized uh, we will see or we monitor the process of the deployment so let's wait and see how this will be done here we have the uh, package created at what time or the deployment uh, uh, began at what time and the elapsed time uh, how much uh, seconds or minutes and the target how much computers for computers and if there is failure how much uh, uh, or how much computers failed to deploy the software on on successful in uh, deployment of software so let's wait and see how this deployment process will be done so if we can go a little bit further here so we can go there and complete here we can see that it began installation first on the uh, 
primary domain controller so this is the first step VLC deploy so it's deploying the software now on the primary domain controller it is running and it will initialize the deployment on the additional domain controller so this is fine and he is trying to uh, communicate with nrvcb01 it's closed so he cannot will not be able to communicate with it and he is preparing so here we can see that now uh, he failed to communicate with this pc because it is closed as for the other three he uh, was able to communicate with them and two of them are running the software deployment and the other one is initializing so it's still initializing the deployment what we mean by initializing first of all it will communicate with the uh, uh, the pc and then it will copy the files of the installation of the software and then it will begin uh, deploying the software silently on the machine so let's see after the finishing of the deployment if these softwares will be installed or not so now we will see uh, still running running after finishing it will give you successful so we will wait so if we can run it a little bit quicker here so we can see here that it is copying the file so the first thing is to uh, communicate the software will communicate with the PC and then it will begin copying the installation files which dot MSI files and then it will begin after copying the files it will begin running the files from the machine and begin the setup and it will be silent so let's see what will happen at the end we need to have uh, a successful uh, deployment we need to see the status as successful and we will get a report uh, a, a PDF report with the installation or the deployment process so let's run it a little bit further so let's go there okay and here we can see just a moment here we can see that the VLC is installed on the uh, additional domain controller we need to see it on the primary and on this machine so this is the package that we uh, intended to install so it is installed already on the additional domain controller we need to see the other two machines so we will go and see we need to see uh, first of all here also is the start process or the the time of the deployment when the deployment started and how much time uh, the deployment runs it is it is running for about five minutes and 14 seconds and this is the user that has the rights to deploy the software on the machine which is the domain admin account of course so let's wait and see at the end we need to have a successful uh, status so we will wait and then we need to have it as successful so here we can see that we have two successful installations or deployment and uh, one is still running this is for the uh, primary domain controller so this is successful VLC was successfully deployed silently to the, pri the additional domain controller and it was silently deployed to the uh, Windows 10 LTSC machine 2019 enterprise so it was deployed we need to see this machine and see if the VLC is installed or not and we need to see also the primary domain controller so let's wait and see if our deployment is finished and we didn't see anything if you we, you notice that on this additional domain controller we didn't see any installation uh, menus or windows okay for installation all of these are done silently without the interaction of the user so if we open this uh, virtual machine that contains Windows LTSC Windows 10 LTSC 2019 Enterprise we will see if we can go a little bit further here we will uh, click OK and then we will log in with any user from the domain for example this will be the domain admin account so here I am typing my name so just a moment it's patient zero and this is the domain admin account this is the domain admin account so we will log in and see if the uh, the PDQ uh, the, the VLC is deployed here we can see that all of them are successful so we can go on the primary domain controller and see if VLC is deployed successfully and 
the same on the Windows 10 LTSC uh, machine. So let's go and see if the deployment is run already. Here we can see there is there is reports. We need to have reports. So we will see the option of reports after finishing the deployment. We need to get a report. So we will uh, open the reports menu and open the deploy and then tell him we need full details of the deploy. So it will open a report for us. We can save it. Uh, and we can export the report as a PDF or any other thing. So let's wait and see. So I think we can go a little bit further here. So here we can see that this is the report. Here we can see that it gives you the name started, finished, runtime, deployed user, status, steps. So here we can see that this is the first machine. The deployment had run at that time and it was finished at that time it has a total of six minutes of deployment and it was successful and it ran or the deployment and the installation was run by the care of active directory account and these are the uh, rest of the pcs with their status okay we can uh, export it and we can save it and we can print it so we can save the report and then we can also export it so we can save the report for further uh, uh, seeing or first and uh, further investigation so here we will save the report so we will save the report this in is an extension of prnx so this is uh, one format that you can use to export the report or save the report but there is other formats I will show you all this one so he gives you a lot of uh, formats for exporting the report so here we will put this report in our total inventory software folder and then we tell him export okay and then we will see here there is a lot of things you can uh, export as PDF, as a doc or Word file or Excel file or CSV file so we will export it as a PDF so we can guarantee that no one will edit or will play with the data so here we will export it as a PDF and then this is simply how we can deploy a software on PDQ we have deployed it and we have seen the successful installation we need to check and see on the virtual machine so let's wait and see the virtual machine here here we can see that the software is deployed so here this is the machine as soon as we logged in the VLC was there so it's it is already finished as, a, as an installation and we need to see if it's also deployed on the primary domain controller here another thing we need to do we need to uh, make sure that the first method of deployment we have used the group policy to deploy uh, a couple of softwares so we can see here that only the PDQ method of deployment was successful the first method by using the group, the group policy was not successful so we will make a group policy update so we will uh, type click or right click and run and then type the command gp update slash force this is a command to refresh the group policy or to force the group policies okay so to see uh, or to, uh, uh, to to make our group policy for deployment of, of software to be effective because still we don't see this software uh, uh, installed or deployed so that means that the group policy was not applied so by this command we are forcing all of the group policies to be applied to this uh, workstation including the software deployment group policy so we will do this by just a moment we will tell him so we can see here or right click and tell him run right click and run okay and then we will type gp update slash force and here after uh, typing the command we will see uh, time telling us that he's updating the policy And here we will see a little bit of a uh, notification saying something here. We need to wait for a moment. 
so what does it say it says that the group policy software installation okay was unable to apply one or more setting because it must be done before the user logs into the machine so we need to start the machine and leave it without logging in or without logging in with a user for a couple of minutes until the software is deployed using the group policy so uh, to fix this error we need to restart the machine two or three times so the software group policy installation will be effective so you need to after making the group policy to deploy a software you need to restart the machine and wait for a couple of minutes without logging in and then after maybe four or five minutes log in and see if the software is deployed if it's not deployed you need to uh, 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 force the group policy by right click and run and make the gp update slash force and refresh the group policy or force the group policy and make another restart a couple of, re of restarts will solve the problem so at the end uh, by making two or three restarts you will see that the softwares are deployed using the group policy method so this is why we need to restart the machine so we tell him to restart with yes and this is uh, the two methods of deployment okay so uh, this is uh, concludes for our deployment methods okay or for our uh, uh, talking about how to deploy softwares or uh, to deploy multiple softwares to a bulk of PCs in our domain silently we need to discuss here uh, another issue uh, we as an IT we have a situation for example that your GM or your one of your uh, supervisors or uh, let's say one of your managers uh, ask you to get a report for a user uh, in your active directory for example he is suspecting that one of his employees are uh, for example uh, uh, getting data or he is leaking data out of the company for outsiders or he is uh, getting secret information and getting out of the company and selling it maybe or he is doing a suspicious activity so he needs you to go to his PC and sus uh, to go to his PC and see or to get him a report with what the user was doing on his PC for uh, an amount of time so for example he needs to know what the user was doing for example yesterday from uh, 10 a.m. to 5 a.m. so or for, sorry from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. he needs to know what the websites that he was visiting what he was doing on his PC what files he was opening what files he was copying if you if he copy uh, some of the work files on a flash so he is leaking data out of the company and he need a detailed report of what the user was doing so how you and as an IT can help him uh, to uh, get the report or to get the data he needs okay we have said before that we can open the event log so we will go to the PC of the user and then we will open the control panel remember that we have or we will not go to the user PC we will go to the domain controller and then we will open the event log okay so he will open the event log and remember that we have done a couple of custom view logs okay this custom view logs uh, we can see from it okay uh, the users activity in the domain so through this custom view logs we can see which user logged into which machine so the first thing you need to do is to go to the domain controller and check the custom logs that we have done before so here for example we have account login here we can see that this is the information okay from the domain controller here we can see that the task is log off login so we need to check the time okay when the user have logged in and check the logs from here from the event log but we can see here that it's a little bit uh, not organized you cannot uh, read the data clearly you need to browse the data and you need to check it one by one and it is not displayed in an easy way that you can understand and extract the data from it so this is the first thing you need to see the account login uh, custom view log and then you need to see the file share access custom log this is also a log about which files the users have accessed on your file server so this is also 
a way but also it's not represented in a way that you can easily understand so uh, here for example he's saying that you are accessing the sysvol so this is normally because all the group policies are there and the object access so you can open the event log and see the events so you can check from the domain controller event viewer the events concerning this user on uh, the machine uh, that he have logged in that has joined the domain so this is the first step but as we can see here we don't see the information uh, displayed in a way that we can uh, get the data easily from it and it's also not enough because it's only giving you the time that the user has logged into the machine and the files that are shared that he accessed on the file server but there is a lot of missing data we need to get the browsing data so we need to get the the websites that he have uh, visited okay and we need to see also other things we need to know if he have copied files for example from his PC to a flash for example okay we all know that you can disable the flash and DVD on the PCs but we need to have a more detailed info okay so how we can solve this problem okay we have a website or some tools from a guy called Nearsoft so this is a website that contains a couple of utilities I will show you all that are very useful uh, to get the data that we need first of all his name is Nearsoft and he is uh, he have knowledge with C++ and some uh, uh, program languages and some uh, coding or something and he has uh, uh, created some tools or actually they are not only system tools he have created password tools system tools browser tools programmer tools network tools outlook and office tools all of these are tools that are very useful and one of them especially in the system tools we will use to get the data that we need and as i said before he is a user and he giving his name and this is his photo and uh, he is saying a little history about his utilities okay and he say that uh, there is uh, some software antivirus that will make or will alert you that the software that he has created is uh, 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 is a virus but it's actually actually is not that this is a false positive alert and as i said before this user is using c++ to make his software which make it fast and small and effective so all of his software is developed using c++ uh, language and that makes them very small and very fast and they are portable so you can uh, uh, carry them on a flash and work with it and uh, the maximum program uh, size will be from one to three megabyte okay so his software uh, as a whole so if you can get all of his utilities will not exceed uh, 60 mega or less okay you can use all of these utilities okay without any problem and he have provided us with all of his info so if you are suspecting maybe this user is making something so he is very clear about his name and his uh, history and I have scanned this utilities I didn't find any problem but I will try it and if you want to try it I urge you all but try it on your own responsibility but as for me I didn't find any uh, any problem using this software so let's see uh, four tools we were using from the system tools this guy has provided us to make a full report of what a certain user in our domain was doing or to trace his activity on a certain PC okay so there is a user in my domain was working on a PC we need to trace or to, to, or to have a report or a detailed report of what this user was doing on this PC on a certain time so let's see what is the first utility that we can work with first of all we will go to the uh, near soft so it is the utilities okay and the first tool that we will work with is the uh, uh, what we have say about the event viewer so this way of displaying data is not effective so this guy gives us uh, a tool that will uh, let you see the event viewer from another perspective or from another uh, way and it's it's much much more uh, readable and you can get the info more easier so let's see here if you open this program it's called full event log view so if you double click on it 
he will go and read the event log of the machine so you get this utility and run it on the user's machine so here we will see that the event log is different here we can see that it is more clear so here he is loading the uh, events okay and we can see here that it's much much clear here we can see that the event you can read it here more clearly you can click on it and export it or you can copy it and it's much much clear here we can see that the time of the event the record the event the level it's informative or uh, critical or whatsoever warning the channel it's in the system uh, event log not the application or not uh, the security and the provider which is the program it's a kernel uh, general uh, error the time service this is concerning the windows time service and we can see here when we click on the event we can get the description from here but it's much much clear and we can here here read it more clearly here we can see that it gives you the event even uh, the numbers we can see here some keywords uh, this is not displayed in the normal event viewer okay and we can see the process id the thread id the computer and the user so this tool or free tool uh, display the event viewer in a much more readable way and you can get info from it much much easier here we can export or we can save the selected items as whatsoever if you tell him save selected items here you can get uh, the event as or the event viewer as a text file an HTML file uh, whatsoever you like so you can get all of these in different formats so this is very useful we will use this tool first to get the event log of the machine okay or we can get the event log from the domain controller so we use this uh, tool on the domain controller and get the event log and uh, arrange it and read it in this way so this is the first step to trace the user this is the first step okay so we will do this step and then what we will do we will have or we need to go so this will run on the domain controller then we need to go to the user uh, PC in the domain and then open the second program which is this one it's win log on view here we can see and tell him yes here we can see that there is a very simple program it will give you the user that had logged into the machine and it's a work group and the last login time okay so here we can see for example let's trace it here here the last time that i have logged into this machine was today at 1 33 pm so this is one useful information so this is the first thing here you know that the user logged into the machine at that time so what we need to do we need to tell him file so we will save the first log he will tell him to save all items so we'll tell him to save all items and we will put it on a folder on my desktop called karim audit so here we will save this log and analyze it later so this is the first thing we can use this is when the user have logged in this is the first one using a program called win log on view this is the first thing and then after logging in we need to see his browser history so let's see from another utility browser histories we need to get the browsing history here so we will open it then he gives us some info what the history that you need from 10 days ago and these are the browsers uh, that he will get the history from them and for all users so we'll tell him okay and someone can tell me the user can delete uh, can delete the the history but through a group policy you need to have a group policy applied not to enable the user to delete the history and by the way this is recommended so you need to disable uh, uh, deleting history on all of your browsers on all of your PCs and domain but also you need to take care that when the history uh, or the size of the history is uh, maximum or it reached a certain size you need to have another group policy to delete the history after reaching a certain size anyway so here we got the browsing history we can see that one of the things he say that there is the user opened the file called secret.txt so this is the first thing that we can take on and we can see uh, this was done yesterday so we can see here 
that this is locally and then this is some websites for example here we can see that this is the website and this is the time and how much uh, this is called visit count how much did he visit this site so here we can see that this file locally on the machine was visited twice okay so here we can see that this is the uh, the website and this is the browser that was used so here we can are using the age browser and this was the user that have accessed this website this is the profile okay and at the end we can see that this is the URL lens and then where to get the history so he got the history from this location so he's giving you his data source or the history file that he got this data from so this is also useful information now we have the time and we have the browsing history so we will tell him file and then save all selected files okay and tell him also to extract it or to save it or export it so this is the second thing so we have the login time we have the browsing history this we have uh, now it using the browsing history view and then for the very good tool that this guy has created something called this is the one that is the uh, real gem here so we can see here that this is something called last activity view so let's open it and see what we will have so here let's see what happened here or let's see what is the info provided here he is getting data let's see here what here we have here we have the action so what happened here and then the description is open an exe file so this is very detailed open exe file and this was the file name and this is the file path and this is more info and this is the file extension and this is the data source so where you've got this data from this file okay so we have or maybe this was run by the system but let's go and see for example uh, brave so here for example he have open a browser so this is one of the uh, info here we can see that how he got this information he got it from this file so we need to take care here that these files are in the prefetch so this we need to clear this so the prefetch is, is something like temp files we need to create it regularly so he got all of this data from the prefetch so there is also another uh, group policy to clear this or as you wish you can leave it for some time and prevent the user from deleting it or you can delete it regularly because by time uh, this makes the machine slow but anyway this is the source of the data okay that he's giving you for example here we can see that i have opened the folder br tools so he is saying that i have opened bra opened a tool or open a folder so this is also done and he can say that he is getting it from a registry key so this data is very very useful okay we can see here a lot of things so here we can see run open a folder view a folder uh, a lot of useful data and by the way for example here we can see that sometimes resume from sleep this is because i put my laptop on hibernate so this is uh, sleep and returning back and software installation so there is a lot of info this is very useful so what we'll do we'll tell him file and save selected items and then export it so now we have three things we have uh, the login time the browsing history the activity view and then we have the last thing what he was shared searching on the internet so we have another tool that will tell us what he was searching on the internet so let's see here uh, another tool that he has provided us something called let's see here the uh, browser or the browser tools something called history so let's see search history here uh, not the website my last search so this is here he will give you what you were searching on your PC and on the internet through uh, search engines for for example here he's telling me that on uh, 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 May 7 I opened the Mozilla Firefox and I was searching for PMP courses so this is I have done this already and here is the research results so if I open I copy this URL and put it in the browser 
you will give me my research results and these are uh, arranged here in some order so this is also a very good way to uh, know what the user was doing so we have four things we have done we have the login time we have the browsing history we have the activity on the PC and we have the uh, search history uh, on the browser or the search on the engines uh, in the browser so all of this we will export it also as well and then we will have something like this we will have a folder so let's see here we will have a folder like this and we will have okay one so we'll have this browsing activity we have activity last activity log the search and the win login okay so we need to combine all of these in one excel sheet so here what i am doing here i have this text file this text file and this text file and this text file i will make a workbook on excel sheet that i will combine all of them in one excel sheet so let's see this workbook final result what it what it what it will do let me show you all what i mean by this so here let's see if we go here this is the login time here you can see that the login time here it is by time and so and so forth. this is it a little bit organized we can see here that uh, it is arranged and it and the columns are written in a certain way so this is one tab and then we can go to the browsing history here you can see that the time here I have split the time to day months year and time so here you can filter the browsing history according to the day and months and year okay so this is a tweak that I have done on the Excel or on the text file to arrange the data in this way I will show you all how I have done this so what we have done we have uh, this activity we have played with the data in this activity to be displayed like this as day months year it was and time it was previously displayed as one line something like this one here it is 1806 it was displayed like this so I have split the login time to day month and years and time so we can have more control over what we are displaying so here it is displayed like this so we will make a workbook and we put all of our data in this way okay it is displayed like this and as for the last activity we can see here also it is displayed in day months year and time and description and all of these are displayed in this way you can see it's much more organized so we can filter here we can see for example open a folder restore a, a point resume from sleep run an exe file uh, sleep software crash software installation uh, system shutdown system restart so these are all uh, task run user login a view folders in explorer a windows installer installing the software wireless connection connected wireless connection disconnect so this is a very detailed info here you can filter it by day months and years so this is a very detailed info and we can from it make a detailed report so here is the login time this is the browsing history this is the activity and this is the search history also by day months and year so how we ha I have made this workbook so let me show you all how I have done this workbook first of all we will open Excel and then tell him here Excel sheet and then we will open a workbook okay and tell him data and tell him get data from text or CSV file so here we will go to this one and then we will go to our folder on our desktop the one that we have exported the files and tell him browsing activity this is the first one okay so tell him import so here this is the data I will tell him transform the data first of all I will change the data a little bit so here what I am telling him here we can see that the data is organized in this way so I need the time here to split the day months 
and year and time I need to press to split them to four things so here we will click on this one and tell him to split column by delimiter so here what we will do when he sees the slash one he will split the column so let's see what we will do here we will do this what we can see here we have splitted the day and then the months and then we have the year but the time is still included with the year so we need to split this as well so we will click on this one first of all we will tell him right click here and then rename so we'll tell him rename and make this as day and then we will make this rename as months and then we rename this as first of all we will need to split it first so we'll give him again tell him split but here we will split it by what we will split it by space so here we can see let me show you all here this is the year and then there is a space between it and the time so we will split it from here we split it in the space so tell him just a moment guys so let's continue continue guys here we will need to split it the year from the date so we'll tell him split column by delimiter and then tell him space but we tell him from the left most delimiter so we will do this and then he will see that the year is splitted and this is the time so here we will rename the column and make it year and then we have this one as time Okay. so now we have the data in a more organized and more readable way and we can see here that all what we have done here it is recorded in steps and these steps we can click on advanced editor it is written these steps are written in a script so we can use this script copy it and uh, do all what we have done by copying the script in this uh, field so I don't need it for example I have done all of this I go to advanced editor and copy the script and apply it to another query so we'll see this this in a moment but now we can see that the data it is organized now we need to have the day months and year to be uh, in the first or to be the first column so we will do here a little bit of uh, putting it at the front so here is the day and then we need to have the months okay here we have the months here and then we need to have the year so we'll copy it so this is done using the power query here we can see that this is the year and then we need to have the time so we'll go and add the time here so we'll go here and get this is and then here is the time so we have finished editing the data and organizing it then we tell him to close and load to here we need to tell him where to put the data we will put it in the existing workbook and then we need to put it here and tell him add this data to the module something like caching and tell him ok So here we can see that the data it is uh, organized here in the way that we have seen it in the preview okay now this is by clicking and doing so we need the other things so here we need to do the same that we have done for the browsing activity we need to do it for the last activity log the search and the login I will show you how we can do this using a script so we have done this using clicks and uh, normal clicks so let's see how we can do this first we will go to or we will rename this and name it this sheet and rename it browsing history or let's say it browsing okay and then we will have another sheet and then we will tell him data 
and then to tell him get data and then tell him to have uh, from other sources and tell him a blank query so this is a blank query and then what we will do we will open the advanced editor okay remember this is a script so what we will do we will delete this and we will have the script here I have run it or I have typed it here so tell him control A and then control C and then go to this script and type it here like this and tell him so here he is getting the data from this file and he will arrange or sort it the same way that we have done in the uh, browsing activity so here we can see all of the data it is already written okay and done in the same way that we have intended now we need to name it as uh, uh, last activity log and then we can right click here kid okay and then tell him close and load to with him to lose the existing sheet and add to the module and then okay so here the data are arranged tell him right click and rename activity okay and then okay and then open another one and then we will go and have the windows login so here we can go and we need to have the win login so this is the script of the win login we need to open an excel sheet and then tell him data and then tell him get data and then from other sources then blank query and then open the advanced editor okay and then type the script so this is another script control a and control c so here we will right click here and then like this one and then tell him done so this is the login time and then we tell him win logon okay and then tell him close and load to here existing worksheet and then add to module and then this is the third one okay this is the third one we have done this in the browsing history and this is the we rename it as logon okay and then we'll have the fourth one and the last one we will tell him or we need to get the data from the search so this is also the script of the search so let's go and make another blank query here is data and get data from sources and then blank query and then get this data or this script copy and then we will have the advanced editor and then click on this one and this and then tell him you can see that he is pointing to the CSV file so let's done and then we will name it as name it as search history okay and we can tell him load to this excel sheet to this existing excel sheet and add to module so here you can present this excel sheet to your manager here this contains all of the data he needs and it is arranged in tabs so here we can see that it is search history okay so and then you can save this file okay as excel sheet and give it to your manager so this is a very good way to make some investigation about a user activity on a pc so this is it uh, how we use the near soft tools and i urge you all to uh, see these software tools so this is the website and i hope this video is informative for you all thank you for watching and i hope it was not a long video thank you so much we will close this one mm, stop